Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi friends, this is Mr. Woods Teaches. Today we're going to be reviewing how to multiply fractions. What does it mean to multiply a number by a fraction? Well, it means to take part of that number. And that number could be a whole number or a fraction as well. We can solve this by repeatedly adding the multiplicand as many times as there are ones in the multiplier. What does that mean? Well, let's set it up. So we have, for example, one half times eight means one half of eight, which is four. So you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What did you do, Mr. Woods? That sounds like it's division. Well, actually, this is a form of division, but we use multiplication signs and such. So let's take a look at this. So we have one half times eight, but wait, that's actually eight ones. So here I have my numerator is one and my denominator is two. Here I have my numerator is eight, my denominator is one, which means I have eight ones or eight. And what we do is we say, well, that's equal to, we multiply one times eight is eight, because we do the tops, the numerators, and we multiply the denominators, two times one is two. Now wait, what is eight divided by two? Because that's what the fraction is, it's saying this, this numerator is divided by the denominator. So I know that there are four uh, twos up here. So that is equal to four over one or just four. Easy peasy. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's, let's look at some other examples. So here it says calculate two thirds of 21. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, that's gonna be, that's a little more difficult because 21 is a larger number and all this other stuff. But down here, here, as the key is knowing your multiplication table. You can write this out two thirds times, I want to do 21 ones. Well, if we're multiplying this right here, this three times one, so that's going to be three here. So 20, well, what can you get multiplying three to get 21? So you're going to need to know your facts. So I know that three times seven is equal to 21. So what I can do is take this out, Make this out, make that a seven. And so two times seven is equal to 14. And that's what two thirds of 21 is. That's my final answer. Let's take a look at example two. Now you're gonna to have to use fractions in word problems. And you're gonna come across this within your state testing or in your classroom. And here it says, you are going on a trip of seven miles and you have gone three fourths of the way. How far have you gone? So it's gonna be three fourths. So I, that's how far I've gone of seven miles. And again, draw it out like this to remind me that I'm multiplying my numerators and then multiplying my denominators. And I can put my bar here. So three times seven is 21 and four times one is four, but wait a minute, that's an improper fraction. Let's make it into a mixed number. So I know that uh, four times five is equal to 20. So I'm gonna say it's five, one four miles. I'll just put it in there for miles because we have to make sure we're using that units measure right here. So I've gone five and one fourth miles or five and a quarter miles. Example number three. So. After a party, there's leftover pizza. I've never been to a party where there's been leftover pizza, but let's say there is. And each pizza was cut into fours. How much was left over? Well, I can look at this and say, well, there's one, two, three, four, five fours. So, oh, well, that's it, or five pieces. One, two, three, four, five, five, and one times four, one fourth, that equals to five fourths of pizza. Yeah, I could have just counted it up like that, but I say, hey, there's these five fourths here. And so I have five fourths. Let's make that, that's an improper fraction. It's top heavy. See, that's larger than uh, the, the numerator is larger than the denominator. So I'm going to get one and one fourth of a pizza left over. See how I'm using my knowledge of the language here? 
there's leftover pizza that was cut into fourths, so I could just put a fourth here, right here. So, okay, I know that there's that, I can count it up. There's five pieces. Five times one fourth is equal to five fourths, which is equal to one and fourth, one and quarter pizzas. Sometimes you come across these problems and, it, and it's like, show a representation of one third times one half. And you're going, Mr. Woods, you're making my mind hurt. This is like, no, no. Well, let's break it down. Let's say you ha you're going, okay, let's have a piece of paper. And I have this piece of paper here. This is my step one. And I just look at it and I'm going, okay, I'm trying to find one third of one half. Well, let me do my second step here. Here's that same piece of paper and I divided it in half. Coming along with me, so here we go. Let's look at step number three. Here's that paper that's divided in half. That's my one half right here. And then I need to put it in, I need, I'm trying to find one third. So I'm like, okay, there's one third, two thirds, three thirds. Let's assume they're all equal, okay? So I'm looking at one half, so it's one third times one half. So I have right here, this is gonna be one third, right? This is another third, this is another third, and then I'm looking at one half. So it's one third of one half. I'm gonna shade this in right here. Make it so that we know that this is the piece that we're looking at. But wait, how many pieces is this paper cut into? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. And that is just equal to, I'm gonna do this out here, that's equal to one sixth, right? Let's do the math. That is equal to one three, one third times one half. And if we do the math here, one times one is one, two times three is six. So there we go. There's our answer. And this is my representation. Remember when they're asking for representations or draw a diagram or something like that, start drawing, do something. Oh no, we've got a quiz here. Let's take a look at this. True or false, to multiply fractions, you only multiply the numerators by each other. Think about that. Big false. Because we have, we have one third times eight fifths. I'm sorry, let's make that two thirds times eight fifths to make it a little more dramatic. We, if we just multiplied the denominators, okay, or I'm sorry, the numerators, it, it's like, well, wait a minute, what, what are we supposed to do? Add this together? No, it's two times eight, that's gonna be 16. Fifteenths. We have to multiply the denominators over here, and then we multiply the numerators right here. Quiz question number two: What is half of three fourths of pizza? So I have. I'm going to draw this pizza. I have one, two, three fourths of that pizza. Right now, I'm going to do a representation of this to give you to show give you the visual here. Let's say I, I said, okay, I'm going to take one half of this slice. And I'm going to take one half of this slice and one half of this slice. Two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I had that other fourth here, there'd be eight pieces, right? So do you think it's going to be six of eight? Let's take a look. One half of, that's that multiplication sign, three fourths. And we multiply the numerator times the numerator, and that's going to be three. R, and then two times four going to be eight. So one half of all this, one, two, three, four, five, six, is one, two, three, like that. Boom. We're eating this here, and that's in three eighths. Remember I had those eights, one, two, right here, if we had that other quarter. So there's three eighths of a pizza, or three eighths of pizza. Question number three, getting you used to looking at the language of fraction. So what is three-fifths of five-thirteenths? Three-fifths of times five-thirteenths. Three times five is fifteen. Oops, that equal sign is fifteen. And then five-thirteenths is going to be 65. Because what I did is I said, what's five times ten? That's fifty. Five times three is 15, 50 plus 15 is 65. Could we reduce this? Yes, because if you remember your multiplication, hold on a second. In fact, we could have done this reduc uh, reduction really quickly. We didn't have to go through all this. See, watch this. 
drop that out, drop that out, and equal to three thirteenths. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Because if I can, if I do this, let me show you this. Three times five divided by five times thirteen. That's one way I can show it. And that is equal to three times five. Getting me now? Divided by say thirteen times five. Where have we cancel that out? Canceling it out, and that equals three thirteenths. It's kind of a tricky one there, right? But I wanted to show you how you can do it if you're just working through it, you, or you can come over here and, and see that you can cancel it out. Question number four, true or false, is three fourths times five eighths equal to 15 30 seconds? Well, let's evaluate it. Three times five is 15, right? Four times eight is 32. So that's true, absolutely true. Question number five, Marie had three fifths of a cake left over from her birthday. She and a friend ate one fourth of what was remaining. How much of the cake did they eat? We have to look at the important information. So I have three fifths right here of a cake and she and a friend, they ate one fourth of what was remaining. Remember that that's key right there. It wasn't one fourth of the original cake. That's a totally different problem right there are one fourth of what was remaining. I'm going to be one fourth of remaining three fifths. That's what was remaining, what was left over. And that is equal to one times three is three, four times five is 20. Can't reduce that any further. It's going to be three twentieths. Everyone, you did a fantastic job working on these questions. Take a look at it again. Go back and try to apply any numbers this way of multiplication. But I want to say one of the keys is to understand that you have multiplication table you need to memorize. You can have the tables for second, third, fourth, fifth grade, whatever, multiplication tables. But once you start getting into middle school and high school, you are going to need to have the knowledge to be able to calculate quickly. And unless you have those tables memorized, you're going to uh, struggle. It's going to be hard for you and try to count on your fingers and such doesn't going to work. That's it for today. Remember, to be a mathematician, all you have to be is a person that does math. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.